Previously, I looked at Larry Boy and the Bad Apple on the PlayStation 2. I wonder how that went. Good news, this game is evidence for a god. Bad news, it's not a loving god. Oh. Honestly, that whole experience was, well, an experience. I genuinely recommend you check that video out if you haven't, because the process of preparing myself and then playing that game pinballed me around like some sort of metal ball inside of an arcade machine. I really wish I had a good word for that. This video should be a bit more straightforward. One of my favorite things about gaming from my childhood was that, due to the massive technological gap between consoles and handhelds, the same game would often get a completely unique port for handhelds. I've discussed a few examples here before. On some rare occasions, the handheld version even got to blow the main version out of the water. That's what I'm hoping for here. Can Larry Boy and the Bad Apple on the Game Boy Advance atone for the sins of the console version? It really is his last chance to impress us gamers. He only has the one title to his name. The fast version, for context. These games tie into a full VeggieTales episode about resisting temptation. An evil apple with robot spider legs spins webs which turn into portals designed to tempt each individual trapped within. The last video game gave me solid evidence to think she is secretly Satan. Larry Boy has to save her victims and stop her from trapping the entire city's population. On PS2, Larry Boy and the Bad Apple is a 3D puzzle platformer. It is terrible. Game performance is weak, platforming is spotty at best, and everything is so fucking slow. The biggest strength it had is that Unintentionally, it created some fascinating implications about its world, like the Satan thing. I'm not joking about the Satan thing. Moving over to the Game Boy Advance. To start, in doing research for this video, I discovered that Big Idea was still selling brand new copies on its website as recently as 2021. I could have bought a brand new Game Boy Advance game in 2021 and I missed out. I have never owned a brand new Game Boy game. I am weirdly envious. If only there was some sort of vegetable themed cartoon that could teach me not to be envious. Oh well, let's look at the game. This version of Larry Boy is still a platformer, but almost everything else is different. I'm not being hyperbolic either. Skills and tools are different. Levels are different. The design philosophy is different, and the philosophy philosophy is different. That one probably sounds less intuitive than the others, I'll explain later. Where the console game was slow and trudging, firmly at the halfway point between puzzles and platforming, this one wants you to be fast, and the only puzzle is the platforming, figuring out how to get through each level. It even has a timer up top, with the implication being that if you don't complete each level within the time constraints, Larry Boy's friends will be forever lost to their temptation. Now, the last time I ran into incessant time limits in a game, I was looking at shitty App Store games that use them inexplicably. And trust me, so many bootleg phone game developers use them for reasons I cannot fathom. However, Larry Boy and the Bad Apple uses them well, because the timer is the obstacle you're trying to overcome. You're not going to fall into lava or get ambushed by demons this time, but you may strike zero on the clock and have to start over. The enemies are all just normal, sentient, vegetable criminals this time around. Weirdly, it introduces one by name, Oscar, even though there will be so many duplicates of him. Do they all share the same name? Is every onion just named Oscar? What kind of Vault 108 bullshit is this? I am two for two Larry Boy videos where I make obtuse Fallout references. I really need to broaden my horizons. Anyway, touching Oscar the Onion's mad science clones massively slows you down, and he also looks like the caricature a racist VeggieTales denizen would draw to discriminate against onions, but that's beside the point. The pesky pee will turn off your levers when you try to switch them on, Red pepper guards reverse your controls, and though it's not an enemy per se, dripping pipes will directly stun you. That does not look like water. All of their debuffs last a long time, so you want to be careful. On the flip side, combat isn't. 
there is no combat system. The only vegetable on vegetable violence is when you are the victim. Not only does this make things unique as the only pacifist superhero game I've ever played, it also allows the game to focus entirely on the platforming mechanics. This game does what it does with a surprising amount of focus, and probably because of that, the controls work very precisely. Barring one exception, I'll highlight when we get to it. Movement is on the D-pad, with up used for climbing ladders, and down used to roll into a... Uh... Guys... Larry Boy is able to suck his own dick. Down is used to roll into a ball to enter pipes or small areas. A is jump, B is interact, left shoulder is held to drag mobile blocks, and right shoulder is held for sprinting. Sprinting into a jump will get you more distance, and is how you can leap over enemies, but you do need at least the slightest momentum to make it work. It won't work from a standstill. There are temporary power-ups, invincibility which prevents enemy effects, a boombox which distracts all enemies and is the only way to stop the pesky peas, and a clock to stop the timer, which also has a negative debuff version that speeds up the countdown if you hit it. These can cancel out enemy debuffs, but you can only have one at a time, so sometimes you will have to make a choice. Larry only has two situational gadgets. A cape, similar to the console game, allows him brief bursts of flight when you find a fan, and his super suction ears can freely swing back and forth on specially marked locations. This last one is the one control that sometimes doesn't register. It's also set to A to connect and release, but you already have to be airborne and you have to be in the exact range it's looking for, so sometimes it just won't do anything. This typically didn't get catastrophic, but it did cause enough issues that I was always sweating it a little more than was intended with these. There is one last tool that technically doesn't impact gameplay, but is still nice to have. On the select button, you can activate Larry Boy's binoculars to scope out the level, and the timer stops while in use. So if you're ever unclear where to go or what to do, you can stop, look around, and take a breather. It's a small part that emphasizes, yet again, all attention should be focused on the platforming. Your goal is to get to the green ticket. No idea why it's a ticket, other than the obvious fact that it's easy to depict in GBA graphics, to get to the next area. Switches activate moving platforms, buttons make matching color blocks tangible, and keys unlock locked-off areas. It's all very intuitive, and the whole picture comes together very functionally. There were times when I experienced genuine excitement, crossing the finish line with one or even zero seconds on the clock, so this hyper-focused design style paid off. Helping matters is that the game is a breezy 90-minute playthrough. Broken up into small enough chunks, it would work well on the go. This game is, at best, a novelty, and the developers seem to know that. It had a very few simple mini-games we'll cover shortly as extra breathing room in between the normal gameplay, and it stopped before it overstayed its welcome. Briefly, to give attention to the visual and sound design here, it all looks and sounds very pleasing for what the system can pull off. I would have preferred Larry be less jalapeno-shaped, and the simpler version of his face here is a little odd, but I'm really having to stretch to even consider these actual complaints. The levels are colorful and cleanly designed, so there's no confusion, with animated tutorials showing you new mechanics before they're discussed in text. This would be an easy game for even a young kid to understand, but it never feels demeaning playing this at an age old enough to remember 9-11. Like the console game, the music is all VeggieTales classics, here turned into 32-bit chiptune covers for the hardware. I recognized all of the tunes this time, so this one even seems to have picked the more iconic pieces from my childhood. Even the writing, limited to very short text boxes, remained punchy and funny for what they are. If I do have a true complaint, it would be this. Each time you unlock a new area, Larry Boy gets dialogue telling him about it, implying he's not there. But the new levels are already in the background, showing he is there. Daredevil on the GBA fixed this by having a solo location just for the necessary in-between exposition, and it's a shame these developers didn't create the single additional background this fix would require. 
Most of the minigames are saved for each area's boss encounter, but one happens twice, just randomly in between. The first time, I was puzzled, because there was zero transition, and Larry Boy was suddenly thrust into conversation with a mushroom who was clearly not in touch with reality. I figured it out quickly, though. In these, Larry Boy is speaking to people experiencing minor personal issues, and he's teaching them a song on the piano that is supposed to help out. How it helps without lyrics? I do not know. These are memory puzzles with short bursts of notes. You can repeat as many times as you need to see them. But if you play poorly, you just scare all of the children and also Alfred away. Doing well unlocks extra lives. Though I was kind of mediocre at these. I kept accidentally hitting the black keys instead of the white keys, and apparently my short-term memory is crappy. I cannot blame either of these on the game. They are my own personal failings. Story time. Even though the design is technically much closer to normal Larry Boy lore than the other version of the game, this version is even less canon to the episode than the PS2 version. Side note, I have now been saying Larry Boy lore with a completely straight face for two videos, as though that is a normal thing. Felt worth pointing out. The levels are even semi-unique where even pre-existing concepts are placed in a different order here. First off, Junior Asparagus, who used to be the beating heart of the Larry Boy series prior to this episode, finally gets more than just a cameo. The Bad Apple tempts him into playing basketball on top of a construction site. She is 100% trying to murder this child. For this encounter, you have to dodge basketballs coming at you, in addition to your normal platforming. This version of the Bad Apple appears to be pretty powered down from the others, even beyond the implications of merely using normal thugs instead of spirits. When you save Junior, he wasn't even aware he was up there, so it seems like this version of the Bad Apple has at least some degree of hypnosis or psychic projection. Next, we actually get to help Alfred overcome his temptation for a silly comedy show. While the console game did skip this, it did technically come up in the episode proper, where the Bad Apple just tied him to a chair in front of the TV. Not her most elaborate scheme. The animation of the show actually reminds me of Tomska's Magical Dream Bed video, which is a completely normal video, I assure you. Anyway, the level takes place in a funhouse, and this boss encounter turns into a block-breaker game to destroy all of her TVs. It's pretty rudimentary, and doesn't really have... good... ball physics, like pretty much every other block-breaker game I've ever played, but it suffices. Level 3 re-enters familiar ground, saving Petunia from her video game addiction. This occasion is the only level in this version we're not in a... real Bumblyburg location, Despite her relatively limited capabilities here, this bad apple apparently also has Tron powers and explicitly sucked Petunia into her handheld gaming device. And so Larry Boy goes in after her. The boss minigame is Space Invaders-ish, but you specifically only have to worry about defending Petunia as you're destroying the evil handypods. Level 4 is unique again. Bob the Tomato has set up shop in a fancy new hotel. Binge eating. It's weird, and ever so slightly in poor taste. For this boss encounter, you have a security monitor and door controls, and can open doors for him and lock doors to block out the bad apple. It's definitely too easy, because I locked her behind a green door right at the start, and Bob didn't have to go through another green door until he was almost at the end of his escape route so she had no chance in hell of catching up. I'm just speculating, but between the locking and unlocking doors while monitoring the security feed from a roboticized enemy, and Scott Cawthon's fundamentalist Christian background, I'm 1000% assuming he borrowed the gameplay concept for Five Nights at Freddy's from this game. Sure, he would have been 28 at the time this game came out, but I'm also 28 and playing handheld children's games, including this exact one, so it's not impossible. Finally, Larry Boy has to go and face his own chocolate temptations as the game's climax. Technically, it has even foreshadowed this moment throughout the game's dialogue, and placing it here at the end does feel more comparatively climactic as his own personal struggle 
rather than getting it over with first, like the other versions. Not that this is the pinnacle of high-stakes climaxes, but I'm still feeling broadly positive about the game, so I'll give it the extra point. So this is a physical location the Bad Apple has set up in, the Candy Cave, which it never bothers explaining. Bumblyberg just has this place. Larry Boy and the Bad Apple pong out their final showdown, with the fun little detail that the ball eventually splits into three with enough deflections. With the game beaten, there's a little outro scene where Larry Boy dramatically runs along a nighttime skyline with his friends cheering and the Larry signal shining in the background. There's not really anything else to do in the game, unless you're really inclined to replay it on a different difficulty, but I felt the game had sufficiently done enough. Larry Boy can rest easy, having one decent game under his belt. That's really all I have to say about what this game includes. This game excludes something rather noteworthy, though. There is no god mentioned in the game. Also, probably in real life, since people have spent thousands of years being unable to demonstrate a god outside of emotional appeals, circular reasoning, or claims equivalent to, of course I have a god, he just lives in Canada, you don't know him. It's kind of a big deal for a VeggieTales property, since proselytizing is their whole shtick. The closest the game gets is mentioning the other characters as his faithful friends at the end, but this game implies the secular definition of friends having your back and supporting you when you need it, instead of the sense of spiritual faith. The moral lesson here simply becomes seek support from people you trust if your habits are harming your quality of life. Last time, I went on a whole spiel about how the other versions of Bad Apple run the risk of making their lessons backfire. The quick version is that shaming people trying to overcome addictions will only hinder the process, and tying everything into a fucking Cosmic Marty stew creates so much unneeded extra shame. There I was, stretching that video's intro out longer and longer to explore the whole deal, and there was a version right here on the Game Boy that did the whole thing correctly. Way to go, unintentionally atheist Veggie Tales. <laughs> Shh, <laughs> shh,